Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fulton Street Beats. Kramer Beretta Special. A lot of interest in this guitar um, all over the place. One, because it's inexpensive. Two, because it plays really good. Three, because it sounds really good. At the $199 price point, it's, it's really an incredible guitar. And with upgrades, you can make it outstanding. <clears throat> now, I have very little money into this guitar, but I have quite a bit of time. Now, being a Beretta Special, you don't get all the frills, you don't get the Floyd Rose, you don't get a locking nut, you don't get anything special, you don't get the tools on the back of the headstock or things like that. But you do get a really good pickup, you do get a stable tuning, it's not bad, it's not, I mean, it holds tune fine. You get an outstanding neck, great frets, and a super fast playing, great sounding guitar. So I took the liberties and I wanted to add a Floyd Rose to this guitar. And if you want to see the video on that, that is here. I got a lot of feedback um, of people disappointed because I didn't flush mount the bridge that I actually routed out and sunk the bridge into the body. Now my initial intentions weren't to do that. My initial intentions were to was to flush mount the bridge. But I quickly ran into an issue. So when I originally did this, and if you watch the video, I traced the bridge for this cutout. But originally I sit it on top of the body. And um, I ran into a big issue because there was an action issue. That's right. Apparently the action of these guitars or the way the necks are shimmed or the way the body's built or maybe the neck is built, it raised the action up. A lot more than I was comfortable with. Now, was it playable? Yes. Was it comfortable? No, it lost its speed. It's, it lost what makes the Beretta Special special. So I decided to route out the cavity just a touch and drop the tremolo system down into the body. But what I found was when I did that, I was able to lower my action even more from what it was from the factory. And still outstanding. I mean, this is an outstanding action now. So that's why I did that. And number two is now I can dive and loke with this bridge. Um, where loking would be nearly impossible with a flush mount tremolo system. So, yeah, you could get a little, but you couldn't get the depth that you might want. You could not get that back flutter that you want. So now we can get that, and it's very stable. It's still a very stable bridge. It's set up properly, and it sounds really good, and it plays really good. So I hope that clears up a lot of questions as to why I countersunk the bridge. Simple answer is action height. Um, and I think if you, and there's other, been other people who have done this too, and they've had to shim their neck to get the proper action height. Now, I don't want to do that. I don't want to mess with the geometry of the guitar, especially when it played so good, because at what point does it not play good? I don't want to rob Peter to pay Paul. I'd rather just pay the piper, if that makes sense. I'd rather just countersink the bridge, do it correctly, keep the amazing action that these guitars are known for, and then do some upgrades. So we did the bridge, and uh, you'll have to excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. And uh, I upgraded all the components and the screws and the, the locking blocks and fine tuners and what have you. So I made this bridge outstanding. Then I did a locking nut up here. And it's a great, it was, this is where I really may split the difference right here because I got the action even lower using this because I could shim this to my desired height. I could experiment to see what worked and make this action the lowest it could be without buzzing, and it's low. Now, another thing that I did, and if you want to look on the back here, I did the tools on the back, which I think is really, really cool. They have the tools on the back. Let me see that there. So we did the tools on the back. We did, um, I have three springs on this system. Usually I run two. I found that the tuning stability on this particular guitar is better with three. I, I'm running a noiseless one in the middle, and... Uh, two heavy-duty springs on the outside, and it really has a lot of tuning stability, which is cool. Also, I've cut out the 
capacitor on the inside of the uh, on the pickup or on the pot I'm sorry on the pot capacitors cut out which gave me a lot more output and a lot more controllable fade and a lot more low volume tone which is the exact opposite of what it should have done but obviously the capacitors that they put in this are subpar and they don't work properly so that has been done what a great playing guitar also as you can see I put a string bar on this and I did this in a very unorthodox fashion and mostly out of necessity the string bar on this, as you can see, is mounted very close to the nut. Now, I didn't have a long enough string bar to put it back here, because as we know, these strings fan out at the top on these Kramers. They fan out, finger out. And you need a quite long bar to put these down if you're running a locking nut. Well, I decided to use this brass one that I had here. And I moved it up close to the locking nut, but I discovered something that in doing that, that I can watch my string drop into the uh, into the nut and know when it's flush on the other side precisely and know when I'm not going to have any, it's not going to go sharp when I lock it down. I can literally visually see it in a close comparison with each other, with the bar, I hope this makes sense, with the bar and the nut. Where when it hits, I know my string bar height is set properly. And I know when I lock it down, it's not going to go sharp. And that's exactly what it did. It makes changing strings so much easier. And worrying about going sharp or flat um, just so much better. It's the, I barely have to use the fine tuners after I get this thing in tune to do anything, if anything. And honestly, I don't think I've even used them yet. Um, but really cool guitar. I recommend this guitar even in stock form. And if you decide to put a Floyd Rose in and you want to flush mount it, that's fine. But be warned, your action is going to be high if you do that. It's going to be high. And also be warned that your screws for your intonation screws that pass through here, usually they protrude on the other side. So getting a Floyd Rose perfectly flat without them ruining the finish underneath or scraping or binding or grabbing or catching underneath getting it flat is nearly impossible so that's another reason why i did that and i'm not going to go around and search for other screws that are shorter because well i want them to work as the way they're supposed to now i have four bridges over here uh, floyd, floyd rose style and both both floyd rose and they all do the same thing those Allen screws pass right through and they just leave a little bit on the other side. So obviously that's going to dig into the guitar when you're using it. And that's something I wasn't prepared to do either. So I believe the right choice was to countersink it and do it, well, I set it up for me. Now if you want to do it another way, that's great. And keep in mind when Kramer does these from the factory, they're putting the flush mounts on because, well, they're setting it up properly. They know what they're doing and what neck angle and what shim they need to have for that bridge to be flush. Me, we didn't have that. We didn't have that. So we're starting with a Beretta Special. and It's a special for a reason. It's a special because it doesn't have all those features that your other Kramer Berettas have. Your 84s and whatnot. So... That's why I did it. I think it's, it's aesthetically pleasing. I think it looks fantastic. And look at that bridge. I think it looks fantastic in there. And um, and it works great. Now, um, I'm going to play a little backing track for you. And uh, you can hear the sound of this thing. Is It's a mean. It's a mean. <laughs> It's a mean sounding guitar. It's fun to play. Let me plug this into the DAW over here and um, we'll give you a little backing track and you guys can hear how this sounds. It's pretty cool. And if you could hit that like button, share, subscribe, and I'll be talking to you soon. And I hope that clarified why I counter the bridge. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.